So if we look at the why now, we can see we've used one type of repair method, which is special. However, there are three other methods that we can actually use to get a clean result and repair the wires in actual scene. So if we go back to Newt now, we can try and attack another wire using a different type of repair method. So let's go back into Newt now. So now I've used wire removal to remove one wire from the sequence using just the normal default repair method. Let's have a look at using some of the other repair methods such as temporal static scene and temporal moving scene on another shot. So if we just go to this shot here which I've prepared. Let's go to the input. I'm just going to play this through. going to delete the bin so we're going to get the widgets on the screen. I'm just going to be looking at the sequence between 30 and 50. As you can see, what we're trying to accomplish now is to remove this central wire. I'm just going to pause the screen there. Let's go towards the end. This wire over here which goes over the clouds. Now this is a completely different scene to one before as the previous scene was one uniform colour which was quite easy to replicate. So now we're going to try and replicate some clouds and try and push the actual node itself to do something a little bit more difficult than just removing wire and replacing blue background. This time we're replacing a cloud behind the scene. So we have to use the same technique again by using the wire removal node and tracking the wire in place either by using the handheld keyframes or by using the eye track. Now, one thing to mention here, as you view your actual keyframes, you have to open up the points tab. And then you will see the actual blue keys appearing on the screen. So you can see exactly where you've laid your keyframes, rather than being invisible and you're guessing exactly what you've done them. So this is using the same technique as before. The only thing that I've done now is change the actual tracking range from the entire source clip to a specified range. In this case, we're going to be looking at 30 to 50. And if you just play through the sequence, you can see that I've tracked it in completely. Just using manual keyframes with a little help from the smart tracker during the beginning and the middle of the sequence. During the end of the sequence, I did this by hand. So, as you can see, if we go on to the repair method, I'm using the temporal static scene. Previously, we used the spatial to actually remove the initial wire from the first scene. So let's have a look at some of the repair methods we have. First of all, we looked at spatial, which was the initial method we used. This is the default parameter. Now we use this method to get a slope dependent filter that interprets across the wire at the most likely given angle. Now this method only uses information from the current frame to perform the repair. We also have the temporal with static scene, which is what we're using for this repair. Now this method uses local motion estimation to align the frames from before and after onto the current frame. If the wire is not in the same place with respect to the background in these two frames, it can be used to the fill in the background information and perform the repair on the current frame. We also have the temporal with moving scene. Now this also aligns from the before and after frames onto the current frame but this uses the global motion estimation. Now again, it gets the background information from these two frames where it can and uses the spatial repair method to fill in the rest. Now this is useful for sequences where the wire is moving and the motion in the rest of the scene is fairly uniform. For example, if the entire scene is moving in the same direction as a result of the camera pan. We also have the clean plate repair method, but we'll cover this in a later tutorial. Now for this particular shot we're going to be using the temporal with the static scene and this is the best repair method as it takes images from before and after the current frame to perform an accurate cleanup and conform a accurate build of the background. Now when you are using the actual temporal method you have to get the option for the temporal offset. Now the temporal offset determines which two frames, before and after the current frame, are used to fill in the background and perform the cleanup. For example, if it's set to 2, then the current frame is 30, and the frames 28 and 32 are used to actually perform the cleanup. In this case, we set this to 1, so our current frame now is, let's say, 30. We're going to be using frame 31 to perform an accurate cleanup on this. 
Now, because there's no previous frame to 30, and there's no information on there, we use just the one frame ahead of this to perform the cleanup. Now, if we just go to another frame, let's pick frame 39, and if we're just going to look through the wire removal node, so you can see exactly what the result is, just give it a second to perform the cleanup and catch up with us. What we want to do is actually just go closer in on the wire itself, and what we're going to do is just filter through each of the repair methods to show exactly what happens. I'm just going to be pressing O on the keyboard to turn the overlay off. So you see, so far we're using the temporal with the frame, and we formed quite a good cleanup on there. Let's go to spatial. Let's go let this render up. Now, automatically, spatial's done a good job for us as well. But in a moving sequence of this, this actually forms a kind of blurring effect, which we do not want to see. We also have the temporal with moving scene. So going to apply this now. Now, the whole point of this is actually to assess what type of wire you have in your scene, and to generally try each of these repair methods to see exactly which one works best, as in all cases, each wire is not created equally. As you can see, in this case, the temporal moving scene is formed quite cleanup as well. However, if we move to frame 47, Let's give it a second to catch up with us. And move on. There's also a lot of odd data appearing in the actual scene itself. If we look closer on, you can see the latter half of the wire is perfect. However, we've got these blips appearing where the data is not being removed properly and the cleanup is not being performed to the best of its ability. So in this case, we go back to the static scene, go back to frame 36, just let the actual algorithm catch up with us just for a second. There we go. Good cleanup. Now you'll notice that in my scenes, I've actually increased the filter size to 10. Now, the default setting for filter size was set to 5. Uh, this was given as an adequate render. However, on closer inspection of the QuickTime that we rendered out, we could see there was a slight outline of where the wire was and the repair was not adequately completed. Increasing this to 10 actually smoothed out the actual layering of the wire and the blending between the sky and the different artifacts between the current frame and the previous frame, which we used to actually perform the cleanup, were uh, better. I'm just going to bring the overlay back up now, and once you actually tracked everything in yourself and perform an accurate track, and set the settings to the specified range of 30 and 50, and we've chosen the temporal static scene method, and increased the filter size to 10, we can actually try and get ourselves a render. So go ahead and render this out, and we can view the results. If we just play through the render now, you can see. The wire has been removed completely from the entire shot, and this is quite a difficult shot to actually clean up on, as the camera is panning in different motions, and we're also getting closer and closer, and a zoom effect is happening. And there's also a lot of motion blur occurring in the scene. Now, this only taken us a few minutes to actually clean this wire up, and normally you'd be having to clear a clean plate and track this in and get the motion just right, which is quite difficult to do and takes a long time. Just by using our wire repair method in the wire pro node. We've actually saved ourselves a lot of time and performed quite a good cleanup. If we have a look at this quick time now, we can see that in the top section we have the normal static repair method, and below we have the temporal with the static scene, and below that we have the actual temporal with a moving scene. Uh, you can see by each of them how the repair method has taken place and how by choosing the correct version of the repair method gives us the best render. Now this is also a case of trial and error and seeing exactly what works for your particular wire and your particular sequence. For the sequence we have chosen here with the Suzuki car and the background wires, the temporal with the static scene is the best. In the next Furnace Core Wire Removal tutorial, we'll be looking at how to use the clean plate repair method to clean up the actual scene.